This week, we're going to dive into Lightroom 5, and I'll show you my favorite new features. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, you're watching another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, the good news is that Adobe has just recently announced Lightroom 5, and there are some features here on Lightroom 5 that I absolutely love. And so today I want to take a look a little bit closer at Lightroom 5. Well, let's dive into Lightroom 5. There are several features that I absolutely love that uh, I think are going to save photographers a ton of time. And uh, these are for fixing um, distortion and lenses, for adding radial filters. And my favorite I'm going to save to the very end because it is, I believe, unbelievable what Adobe has done to, uh, to the healing brush in Lightroom 5. It's pretty spectacular. And uh, I think the price of admission is worth it just for the healing brush capabilities. But we'll get to that. So let's start by talking about how to fix things like this. This is a big issue with this building right here. It looks like it's falling backwards because there's a lot of distortion in this lens. And so we need to fix this. We need to make this building look like it's not about to fall over. And we can do that really easily. Um, and so we'll do that. Now, by the way, I am getting a full screen view by hitting the keyboard shortcut F. That used to be able to put you into a full screen mode for the entire interface. But now that has changed. Now it's Shift F to change how the window looks and just normal F to go to a full screen view of what you're working on. So that's something new. So we're going to hit D to go to the develop module and we need to fix this image. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down to the right hand side and we have um, these corrections, these lens corrections over here. And normally what you could do with a lens is you could hit enable profile correction and it would know what lens that was. So I'll click that and notice it doesn't know what lens it is. I'd have to maybe manually select it if Lightroom had a profile for it, but it doesn't. This was a specialty lens that's not in the library of lenses that Lightroom knows about. And so we need to fix some things. Number one, this isn't level. It's shifting to one side and we have some vertical issues. So we have uh, the ability to click full auto and Lightroom will evaluate the image and try to fix everything on its own. That works okay. Or you can just say level it or fix the vertical issues or do both level and vertical. And that's what we're going to do in this image. So I'm going to click that. Watch what happens. Whammo! We have a building that looks like it is straight. We need to do some uh, fixing on the crop because when it does that, it has to distort the image quite a bit. And then we have these white areas here where the image has been fixed. So all you have to do here is go in there take your crop tool, crop in the sides a little bit, and then you can have your image that looks just fine. So take a look at the before and after falling over, whoa, and looking normal. So that's my first tool that I really like. It's called Upright. We'll go back to our normal view. Now let's take a look at our radial filters. So I'll go into the develop module, kick open this panel over here, and radio filters can be found right next to uh, our brushes and gradient filters and things like that. So normally when you add a post crop vignette, and it's found down here in vignette and uh, effects, what you do, and I'll make a white one, no matter what you do, it's centered. And so that was a real drag in Lightroom 4 in previous versions because if you wanted to have an off-centered uh, vignette or if you wanted to have a vignette that was a different shape, you really didn't have very many choices. You could change the roundness a little bit. You could change the feather a little bit, but that was about it. You couldn't really change the shape of this or, or do anything else. And so now we have these radial filters. We can do all kinds of things. So I'll go up here to this radial filter. It's at the very top. Not only can we add a vignette, we can change the exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity, all kinds of things. So it's sort of like a brush. So what I'll do here is I'm going to drag out sort of this uh, shape right here. And you can now you can change this as you go. So I'm going to try to get as much of our model right here as possible. It's the shelm. And I can even rotate this so it's not a perfect circle. And then what I can do is I can start doing things. So I'm going to take the exposure down to everything that's outside of that. I can change the feather so the transition is either sharper or more gradient. I can do that. The other thing I can do is now I can start adding new 
uh, radio filters. So, for example, let's say we wanted to have Lachelle's face glowing. And this isn't something that uh, necessarily we would want to do, but I could add another filter. What we'll do is we'll take that, we'll rotate it. We can reposition it so it's just on her face, something like that. And that looks good. I'll rotate it a little bit more. And then we can do some things like, let's say we want to have the exposure a little bit brighter. Well, what's happening there? Well, what's happening is everything outside of that is changing. So we want to invert the mask. I'll invert the mask, and now it's everything inside that's changing. So we have that ability. And we can do things like, instead of just exposure, we can just do brightness. We can do contrast. We can take the clarity down. So maybe we just want to have her skin to look a little bit better. We can sharpen up her face. And we can start adding more and more. Maybe we want to have these, um, these paintings back here, these pictures show up a little bit. Well, whoops, we need to invert the mask. So we can add one there. We can add another one down here. You get the idea. You can start doing all kinds of things with these, um, these little radio tools. So there you have it. We've added three of them. And so we've added a brand new picture. So from this to something like that and just a GIF. So I love the new radio filters. And I think that is also worth the price of admission. But wait, there's more to come. And this is spectacular. So normally when you're editing a portrait, and this is where I live, right? This is my wheelhouse. When I get done with all of my normal uh, editing of tonality, well, I normally have to go in and do some retouching of the skin. And we know we've always been able to go in here, and this is a spot healing tool. And you could get uh, you know, a small tool, and if there's a blemish, you could click on that. And you could sort of fix those spots on the skin, and that was just fine. However, if you had an issue, for example, you had some flyaway hairs or something like that. So we've got, let's say, this hair right here that needs to be fixed. Well, to fix that, you'd either have to do a, a series of dots, or really, you'd have to hop over to Photoshop to fix that. Any kind of uh, more than just a dot kind of an issue, you would have to go to Photoshop to fix it. Well, now, this works as a healing brush. So if you click and drag, now you have a brush, and it will go and it will replace this from a different area. And now you can see that that is gone. The nice thing about this is you can do multiple uh, of those. You can change the size. You can change the opacity, so you can do a little bit of work or a lot. So for example, let's say that we wanted to fix underneath the eyes of Sam's face. We don't really need to, but I could go in here and I could maybe do some things like this, and it's gonna choose from a different area. I don't like where that is being chosen from, so what I'll do here is I will uh, say, hey, don't choose from there. Choose maybe from over here. And then what I can do, and I'll zoom back in here a little bit, I can uh, then determine how opaque this is. So it's just a little bit of an issue or a lot. And so it's a much more subtle look, and I can do subtle changes to my image. And that's something you had to go to Photoshop to do previously. But wait, there's more. This is a, a really amazing healing brush because it's content aware. So for example, let's say you happen to be in the Redwoods and you got a really cool picture of yourself, but in that picture you have a mat and you don't want Matt to be in the picture. Man, I wish I could take Matt out of this picture. Well, I can. I'll go to my develop module. And this is crazy. So here we have Matt. He's in the trees. I'll go here to my healing brush tool and I'm just gonna paint him out. So I'm gonna go in here Make sure I just paint right on Matt. And this is pretty advanced because there's all kinds of shrubs and bushes and all kinds. So I'm just painting around, making sure I get just Matt, nothing but the Matt. I'll get that tripod case over there, something like that. All right, now with magic, we can take a different area of the image, do maybe this right over here. Something like that. Good. We need to make that opaque. So it works. Now look, Matt's gone. Poof. Gone. Check that out. This camera over here, I want that to go away. So I can go in here and paint that out. 
course, I would do a little bit better job than that. Maybe like that. You can see that now I'm alone in the forest and Matt is gone and it's just me hanging out in the redwoods. That to me is worth the price of Lightroom 5 because it saves me many round trips to Photoshop for doing all the advanced retouching that I could only do there. Now a lot of that stuff I can do right here in Lightroom. That's a huge time saver and it is something I love about Lightroom 5. Well, there you have it, my favorite Lightroom tools. Well, sorry to Matt for taking him out of the Redwoods, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And you can see why I absolutely love Lightroom 5. And the thing about it that I think makes it a big deal is that you've always had to go between Lightroom and Photoshop to do any kind of pixel level editing and, and healing, retouching, things like that. And now you, you don't absolutely have to do that. You can do those retouching uh, tasks right there in Lightroom. And so absolutely that is going to eliminate the need for a lot of photographers to actually buy uh, Photoshop and that's a big money saving deal and so that might help you make the decision uh, if you're going to upgrade from Lightroom 4 to Lightroom 5. My personal opinion, I absolutely love it. I'm not giving up Photoshop, absolutely not. I need them both but I love the new features in Lightroom 5 and so I'm glad to share them with you. Well don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV right here on our YouTube channel because if you do you'll get tons of tips and you'll see a lot more stuff about Lightroom 5 and Photoshop and shooting and in the studio and outside on location and all the good stuff that we're known for. So click the subscribe button and I'll catch you again in the next episode. So here's my favorites of Lightroom 5. My favorites of Lightroom 5? That doesn't make sense. I liked that until that. Here we go. Want to get the most out of your Adorama photography equipment? Visit our learning center where you can read popular articles, how-to tips, buying guides, and product reviews.